فمنهم ظالم لنفسه ومنهم مقتصد ومنهم سابق بالخيرات بإذن الله The meaning of this verse is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying Allah talked about how from generation to generation is how he gave them the message of the politism and then he said ثُمَّ أَوْرَثْمَ الْكِتَابُ الَّذِينَ أَصْدَفَيْنَا مِنْ عِبَادِنَا And then we have given the book to the we have given the book for as for an inheritance. The book, which is the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah says, we have given it to some group as an inheritance. So they inherited it from other generations. And in there we can understand that this book which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about is the Quran. Because the book is, means it is specific to this book because of not the previous book, it's of Injil and Torah. When Allah said that, we have given it to certain people so, and they inherited it. Who are these people? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Min ibadina, they are, um, they are some of our good servants, the servants of Allah. So I, Allah says, I have given that book to some of our servants of Allah. And then who are those servants? Allah says, Min ibadina, ladina sbarfayna, min ibadina, thumma awratna al-kitab al-ladina sbarfayna. We have given the book to those whom we have chosen. Those who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah has chosen and they are among the servants of Allah, the Almighty. The word is Dafa. There we have to emphasize this word. It's Dafa. Allah has chosen them. In the Quran and in the Arabic language, the word choosing has several words that are, can be translated as choosing. So there is a to ikhtara, to choose. Ijtaba, as Quran uses many times. And Islafa. So Islafa, these words have different levels and different, well, different aspects. When you use a certain word, it shows you how the people and the group who have been chosen, how they are elevated and how they are in high, how they are in respect. The word is Dafa, that is the highest level of choosing people or anything. That means to choose something, it is, is Dafa is the highest level of choosing one group or one people. Allah uses that. And we know, we say, always say, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and Mustafa al-Muftar, he is the Mustafa. We use that word, Mustafa, for our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in the Quran, there are many verses which shows that Allah uses, that he, when he is choosing the angels, and when Allah has the power, Adam wa Nuhan, wa ala Ibrahim, wa ala Imran, so it is only that word of Islafa is for the respect. From there we can understand that all the believers, number one, they Allah has chosen them in in a respect, not as randomly. So Allah put them apart from the rest. We have that dignity. Number two is that all those who have accepted the book of Allah, they are in one category. So there are no, there are no ten categories, only one category. Because Allah has chosen them and has given them the book for inheritance. That is one thing that we should understand. Number one, that all Muslims are one and they are in high position.
in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah says, فَمِنُمْ ظَالِمٌ لِنَفْسِهِ وَمِنُمْ مُقْتَسِدٌ وَمِنُمْ سَادِقٌ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ So among them, there are a group who, there are groupies who wrong to themselves. They make mistakes against themselves. That is the group that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen. They divided themselves into three. And that division is not the division that we know now which is based on madhab and sect, is a cult, is and so on and so on. And uh, based on even some aqidas and all that. It is all Muslims. They always <coughs> automatically, without even that they come in agreement and have chosen to be in groups, they went to, they always go into three levels. So that categorization, which Allah has put them in three, it's not, Allah doesn't say, I divided them into three. But He says, among them there are some, there are some who wrong themselves. That means it is they who divide themselves. It is the people themselves who take, make the decision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making the general decision, but you as a human being, you have free will, and you can decide what you want. So if you want to go to hellfire, you will decide it. If you want to go to paradise, you will decide it. So the decision comes from you, that Allah, whatever you decide, then you will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's how it works. And when it comes to the, you wrong to yourself, how somebody can wrong against himself? How somebody can destroy himself? That's one point which we need to understand. Uh, is it that somebody is taking a dagger and stabbing himself, or taking arm and going, just fighting against himself? It's not that all, but in, it is in other ways. What are those other ways? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because He has given us this free, free will, then you choose to destroy yourself. And you can understand that where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not use the wording that He says, we are making it we are, Allah did not say that they do not follow my commandments. Allah did not say they hit other people, they do this, this. They uh, go against my kitab, but you wrong yourself. Only you do something bad to yourself. What is that something wrong you are doing to yourself? That is easy. There are three ways that you wrong yourself. Three ways that you take the dagger and stab yourself. That three ways uh, because uh, also we see that we among us we are in three categories and that uh, categories the one who uh, one of the categories they do it in three ways. That three ways are number one you may come against Allah the Almighty himself by doing shit, by doing something which is completely against Allah's uh, uh, orders. So that is one way you rebel to your Allah, which was created. The second category is that you wrong, you do wrongs against other human beings. The third category is that you wrong to your own self. So in details, or together all the three ways you are mistaking you are making that mistake to yourself or in all the three when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says alladhina amanu wa lam yalbisu aman iman bidulmin Allah was talking about the believers he said those who believe in Allah the Almighty and they do not mix their beliefs in shirk they do not and associate the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with something. Uh, they, they do not take something that associates with Allah's way of worshiping, like making 
choosing somebody that they beg. And when they beg that person, that means they don't rely on Allah, and you, somebody can subconsciously can think that, why don't you beg this person that Mr. X and Y, they beg him, and they got what the answer. So you try. They do that way, that is shirk. So those, still it's a shirk, the shirk has many categories. It's a category of shirk, which still you are in the category of a believer. And many ways like that. The, the second way that you starve yourself, and you destroy yourself, is that you oppress the human being. You do, you steal, you hit, you backbite, you do all kinds of bad things in the rights of the human being. That means you are doing all that yourself. It's coming back to you. And that is practical. You, every day you see the, how the karma works, you see every day. So that one, and in the hereafter, ultimately it is you who is suffering. You may try to do something bad to somebody, but you will ultimately see that it is you who is falling into that trap. That is another way that you uh, oppress yourself, you wrong against yourself, and you do all those bad things to yourself. The other way is that someone who is more deep, he directly attacks himself, <coughs> mentally and physically. Say the person becomes a loser, he drinks, he is idle, he is doing all those kinds of bad things and destroying himself. So then, that's another category that you wrong yourself. We are not going further into that, but let's go to this way. That uh, Allah, we mentioned the first category. There are a group who wrong themselves. The second group, the second group are those who take the middle course. They are in the middle. They don't do all kinds of bad things. And at the same time, they don't excel. They are not in excellent position. So that group is the middle course. You can understand that kind of group. They are the ones who have ups and downs, trying their best, falling into mistakes, and, and preventing for Allah. All the time they are in that struggle. That's one group. The third group. Allah says, وَمِنُمْ سَابِقُمْ بِالْخَيْرَاتِ بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ And there are groups who are in foremost they are foremost in good in good deeds. They go further, they are in the front line. That group, they are doing excellent. That is the third group. Those who do the excellent. The excellent group now, who are they are you can understand, by the way, they are you are doing like all kinds of things you score F and others you score. 67 like that, 80 say, or like say 50. And others are scoring low. <coughs> so we are in, that, in those classes. When we are all that, how the human being, generally we have to, um, let me take an example, using another three ways of the human way of thinking. First, when religion comes, or anything new comes to our nation, they divide into themselves into groups. They are divided like natural into three groups. One group who accepts it right away, one group who rejects it, and one group who try to play games around to use a democratic way and in a middle course they, they use in a way that they say yes we accept. And again, from their deep heart they do not accept. It happens that. So I I, I like to take an example. So what I have heard when I was a teenager in a book that was talking about the American natives, what the story I heard was that uh, the American Navy they came to a small island during World War II and they asked the elders of that village that they will take them out of this island 
and they will give them high rise buildings, nice life, good job and everything in the US or somewhere else, wherever it is. And then we will say, okay, let's go back and consult among ourselves and we will make the decision. See you tomorrow. When they came together, one group said, that is not possible. These people are trying to kill us. How can they get uh, buildings and lives and so and so? The whole world is this island. Where can they get? They are not, uh, is it in the, in the middle of the sea? It's impossible. So they know only that island. The other group said, no, maybe because they themselves, where do they come from? Maybe they know another island where these things are possible. Another group said, no, what we will do, okay, we will go to them and say to them, listen, um, give us money, we will talk to the people to convince them, so you just give us whatever you want to give us. They are monafate, playing, playing that game. They divide into this dream. And that's usually it happens in every, everything in you, it always falls into those three things. That's an example. When we are in this situation, we need that first of all, we, will, we must realize that all Muslims are one, in one class. We have one classification. Regardless of our color, our um, mother, or whatever we talk about. And then the second is that every one of us in a good situation, Alhamdulillah, we are in a good situation, don't worry. Some of us may not perform regular prayers, like once or uh, one after time, they may miss it. Some of the, us, they do mistakes uh, like every other day, every day, and then depends. Some of us are straightforward, but all of us are in good condition, but still, we are in levels. So we have to accept those levels. Apollo called them, you know. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala Rasulullah Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa salam. My dear brothers and sisters, today is that topic is that all Muslims are one regardless of our deities, the level of our good deities. So we should not blame each other because of our weakness. You only need to help your brother or your sister that you feel they are missing something, but you should not blame them and should not put them, label them to apostasy, should not label them to any kinds of bad things. Give them good advice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, what happens then hereafter? If this one, if we are in this situation in this world, what happens next? In the hereafter, how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will categorize these three groups? Allah has mentioned that in Surah Al-Waqa'a, where Allah says, وَكُنْتُمْ أَزْوَاجًا ثَلَاثًا فَأَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَيْمَنَةِ وَأَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ مَا أَصْحَابُ الْمَشْأَمَةِ وَالسَّابِطُونَ السَّابِطُونَ أُولَائِكَ الْمُقَرَّبُونَ Allah is saying here, it's Allah who is sorting you into three classes, a companion, of the right hand and the companion of the left hand and those who will go from those who go uh, those who are in foremost in, the, in this world will be foremost and number one in the hereafter so Allah is showing us here that the group who are uh, first of all some one group will get their uh, rewards from the right hand another from the left hand those who will go in the left hand, then not, we can see here that all of them will not go to hellfire. Allah will take them into his course and will, and will sort out. And some of them will be in pain, some of them will go into maybe hellfire for a short period of time, some of them will pass, they, are in the, they will be classified after. Another group will get their book from the right hand and they passed. Another group, they are excellent. Those three groups. And the Quran puts all that into many different verses. For example, Allah says, those who are, those who are valuing to themselves, 
those who wrong themselves, Allah says in another verse, when the first when they are in this category and they got their book from the left hand, they are worried, they are in a very confused situation. And then finally Allah will let them go to Jannah. And then they will say, وَقَالُوا الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ الَّذِي أَذْهَبَ عَنَّ الْحَزَنَ إِنَّ رَبَّنَا لَغَفُورٌ شَكُورٌ They will say, oh, thanks to our Allah, the one who removed the worry from us and let us go to Jannah. And then and they say, oh, our Lord is the one who is uh, who accepts the peaceful giver and he is thankful. That's one group. The other group who are in the middle course, Allah says, فَحَسَبْنَهُمْ إِسَارًا يَسِيرًا Allah will recon them in an easy way. Their calculation will go like faster, easier, and then they will hopefully will pass, inshallah. Then the, the third group, who are the excellent group, Allah says, They will go into the Jannah without any recording, any inspection, any check out, anything, they will go to Jannah directly. So then we are in these three categories. How can we try? All we need now is to try our best to go to the first group so that we may fall into the second group. I say and the, the last and the middle and the, and the first group. Sadhukun. If you, you have to target the Sadhukun, the foremost group. So you may become in the middle course and then you try, if you try to always not to be lower, because if you try, if you just expect it to become the lowest one, you may go down and you may inherit the hellfire. That is what you want to be always. And as we see, according to my observation, I see our Muslims, we have one problem, that we always say, uh, brothers, can you come forward? So, Let's keep a note for the brothers coming after. Inshallah, we will conclude soon. So, um, to my observation, Muslims have one, one issue which lies them bad, which is what we believe is our khatima, the end. We say, when I get older, or the last day of time when I'm dying, I will become nice. So then everything that I did before would be cancelled. That is something we have in our mind. But we are taking that, we are, that means we are fooling Allah. We are not, we cannot believe Allah who created us. So you have to know, the moment you reach at the puberty age, to the last minute you die, everything you did is in record. So you have to be always in the best status. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Wala tamutanna illa wa antum muslimun Muslimun Do not die until you are in the state of Islam You should know that everything you did is counted And then they are in the, all in the, in the record And later on they will be added up together And if you pass then you get the channel But if you fail you get to the hellfire That means any time you did is recorded Not the last minute so you have to know that. And then, let us take one example from uh, a role model, Abu Bakr Sadiq, It is reported that one time, it was morning, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was leading the first prayer. So when he was leading the first prayer, then when he is done, he turned to the Sahaba, and he asked them, who of you have visited a brother who is not feeling well or sick today before he came to the masjid. That is the first hour of the day. The day broke up, the break of the day. And then everybody was rushing to the masjid. But he said before that, who visited uh, somebody? Then when he said that, the Sahaba were quiet. And a worker, raised his hand. He said, Ya Rasulullah. Today, when I walk out, before I came to the masjid, I remember that our brother and Abdurrahman bin Auf was not feeling well yesterday, so I went to his house just to, to know his situation. He passed that one. Again, Prophet Muhammad asked him another question. He said, who of you 
have paid time for this morning before we can rest it. And it's early morning, so everybody was quiet. <coughs> Again, Abu Bakr raised their hand and said, Ya Rasulullah, when I was coming to the masjid, I have seen a beggar outside and I gave him the food of my son, I gave half of it to that young poor person, the beggar. So he passed the second, the third one. And Prophet Muhammad asked them, Who of you is fasting today? Then Everybody was quiet. Abu Bakr again raised hand. He said, um, Ya Rasulullah, last night when, before I went to bed, I thought maybe why don't you fast tomorrow? Then I took that decision and I am fasting now. I, I did it. So all the three questions were answered by Abu Bakr. That is our role model. And then, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him this answer. He said to him, Anta was mina sabiqoon al-awwaloon. You are among the four most, the first ones, who are number one excellent group, the four most group. And Allah says that in the other first, wa sabiqoon al-awwaloon, jinal muhajirin wa al-amisha. So that is how uh, the three ayahs that I have mentioned now are coming into that category. And that is our target to become the first group and at the same time to know that everybody has his own weakness, everybody has ups and downs, and you cannot guarantee that today you are in the best situation, tomorrow you may go to the lowest, thing. and to, today you are the lowest, tomorrow you may go to the highest. Thing. So we have to understand each other and all of us to become one and completely forget about what we think about, what we call the Groupies, uh, sectors, cultists, Malabis, so and so. Muslims are one. And all of them should respect each other. Because you, yours, you yourself, you are not in one category all the situation. Then you don't have to expect all the people to be in your category every time. Because today if you, are, uh, if you think you are excellent, and you want everybody to be excellent, what about if you are weak? Tomorrow, you want all of them to become weak like you. So, uh,